Hello, my name is Emily Gibson, and this is my presentation of my media outreach project for Sensation and Perception. I chose to do a multiple page website for my outreach project in order to share information about facial processing, how we see and interpret the faces of all those around us. Throughout the class, I've been very intrigued by the complexity of visual processing. I hope to become an optometrist and specialize with traumatic brain injury patients so I wanted to relate my project to this in some way. As we discussed in lecture, visual processing is a very important way in which we experience our very complex world. Social relationships are very valuable to us as humans. We rely on our ability to recognize others in order to engage with them and create meaningful relationships. Because of this, I wanted to know more about how our brain works to recognize those around us and learn more about the structure and function of these regions. I wanted my project to be interactive. In order to do this, I chose to make a multiple page website where viewers could choose to click on certain pages according to their curiosity. I liked the structure that a website gave me as well as the ability to make a visually appealing and enticing project that viewers would want to explore more of. Under the Learn tab on my website, I described the three main brain regions that research have, researchers have discovered to be involved in facial processing. These are the fusiform face area, the occipital face area, and the superior temporal sulcus. The occipital face area is the first stop of visual facial information and processes parts of faces. The fusiform face area discriminates between objects of a highly specialized category, such as faces. The superior temporal sulcus has to do with the social component of facial stimuli, including higher order cues, such as empathy. In the next tab of my website, I discussed how faces are represented and stored in the brain. I discussed the modular coding view where only a specific brain region or set of brain regions are used in facial processing, and the distributed coding view, a more diffuse representation. Together, these views create a more accurate depiction of how we store facial information. Another tab on my website, I wanted to show other interesting ways in which facial processing research is developed. I found three interesting articles that demonstrate where research in the field of facial processing is headed. They also demonstrate more ways in which facial processing is applied to how we interact with others. One of the articles within the application section of the website discussed how mirror neurons fire when viewing emotional faces. This indicates the connectivity of emotions on facial processing and also indicates the social relevance of perceiving faces for social cues such as empathy in a sad face. A lot of what we know now about facial processing comes from studying those without the ability to do so, without the ability to recognize faces. Prosopagnosia is just that. These patients usually have damage to their fusiform face area or other facial processing regions. The deficits we see from these patients are not a visual processing, as they can recognize other items, as well as sometimes even parts of faces. The issue occurs when trying to process an entire face as a whole. People with prosopagnosia cannot seem to do this normally in order to recognize someone. I decided to use my media outreach project to advance a nonprofit that assists with those who suffer from brain damage as a whole. The Brain Trauma Association works tirelessly to help these patients obtain a better quality of life. They help these patients in many respects with advocacy, research to further the field of neuroscience, and working to improve the outcome of these patients' lives. I enjoyed that my website was as interactive as I hoped it would be. However, the downside to having a website as my medium was that it was very much up to the viewer to discover what you wanted them to see. Also, you had to make sure to really capture the viewer's attention in order to lead them to the different pages. If I were to change mediums, I would have liked to try making a video instead of a website. This way I could have created a concise piece that gets all the information I wanted across and ensured that the viewer sees exactly what I planned on them seeing. I also think it might have been an easier medium for the viewer to consume. Reflecting back on this project, I really enjoyed creating my website. I was proud of what I produced, a visually appealing website that informed viewers of how 
we recognized phases and processed them. I enjoyed getting to learn more about a specific topic that interested me and then getting to share it with others in my class. Thank you for watching my Pechkucha presentation. These are my sources and I hope you have a great day.